I bet you have a hankering for local food and I'm gonna show you how to find some local weeds, perennials, and other fun stuff that you can eat this time of year. This is chickweed, it's a weed, it grows all over the place, but it's great to eat salads, raw. The only thing that's hard about chickweed is it gets a little stringy when you go to eat it because of these long stems. Basically, this is how I would cut it, either with a knife or with scissors. And you can have it in salads and eat it raw, or you can cook it. I love to have it in soups and all sorts of other things. So I've got wild spring garlic here. That's what this is. You can just plant garlic bulbs anywhere and they'll come up like this in the spring. We actually sell something called wild spring garlic, but you can use any garlic for this. This time of year, you just clip it like that. It kind of will taste like garlic scapes or a garlicky leek you can use it as, but you just can chop it up and kind of use it as a chive um, to have it cooked. Um, it's pretty strong, pretty garlicky raw. Works in um, also for pesto. This is our perennial sorrel patch. We just love sorrel. It's super easy to grow. And this time of year, the leaves are just coming up. You can just clip them like this. And they taste really lemony, actually. If you can make sorrel soup is the most common thing that people make out of it. I love to just chop it really small and put it in salad and it adds just this little lemony zest. So this is a red bud tree and these are edible red bud flowers. They're not quite open yet, but you can eat them at this stage. And when they're open, they actually even get sweeter and you can just pick the flowers. They're great as edible flowers in a salad or as garnish and they make it so pretty. This is a stinging nettle. This is one of my favorite wild plants. You can find it in the wild. You can also get seeds of it. We have it on our website and it cooks and tastes just like spinach. It's super nutrient rich. It is called stinging nettles because it has these little pokey things on it that if you touch with your bare hands will really bother and irritate your skin. And as soon as you cook them, the little stingers um, disappear. So I like to cut just a little tender green. Sometimes I'll chop them a little smaller. I love to make soups. A lot of times I'll cook the nettle right into a broth. I might cook it with a vegetable broth or a bone or chicken broth, and then um, add some miso to that to make this nice nourishing soup um, with a base of nettle in it. So many of us spend so much time trying to get rid of dandelions, and they certainly can be weedy sometimes, but you can eat them. I like to cut the small leaves. They're more tender and not quite as bitter than the big, huge dandelion leaves. And they're also really strong. So I only clip a few of them and then kind of chop them small. And again, I like to cook these into a broth because they're bitter. And the longer you cook them, um, some of that bitterness will go away. The flowers on dandelions are super yummy. The bitter part is the green. Those are called sepals, um, but the petals are super yummy. And just chew the petals like that and they're super yummy and sweet and you feel like you're just eating um eating sunshine did you know that raspberry leaves are edible they're great for making tea so you can just pick the raspberry leaves and either make the tea fresh or you can dry them and make dried raspberry leaf tea especially good for women these are garlic chives super easy to grow they can grow in sun they can grow in shade they compete well with weeds throw some seeds down and likely in a year or two you'll have a garlic chive patch. They come up really early. They've been up for weeks now and you can just clip them like this and use them like chives. They just have a garlicky chive flavor. We have these on our website. They do reseed a lot and can get a little weedy so just watch out for that. This is red vein sorrel. So beautiful this time of year. Look at that pretty red veins in there. You can just harvest them like this. Use these sparingly. They're pretty strong kind of bitter and sour, but I like chop it really small and put it in a broth. Super easy to grow perennial. We've got seeds of these available. Just kind of toss them out there and in a year or two, you'll have some easy red vein sorrel. This one can also grow in part sun, shady, somewhat shaded location as well. This is regular chives. I just clipped these. Super easy to grow perennial. When you look at them like this, they're round. They're different than the garlic chives. The garlic chives are flat. When you look at them like this, they're flat. So that's how you can tell them apart. It doesn't really matter. They pretty much grow really similar. The garlic chives are more garlicky, have a bit of a stronger flavor, and the char chives are just like regular chives. Onions, I love to chop them small, use them as garnishes and soups. I love to have them on the top. A miso soup is pretty common. Any use you really have for green onions, you can use these chives for. Perennial, super easy to grow. Throw seeds down and start cutting. This is parsley that made it through the winter. 
Some of them in these real mild winters we've been having will actually make it outside. Here in our hoop house, they almost always make it through the winter. And so this is a great time of year. You can just harvest all the little edible parsley. And then it'll start blooming and then it'll try to flower and make seeds. You can harvest seeds off of it too later on in the summer. This is sage. Oh, it smells so good. And this time of year, it starts re-sprouting. We really hacked it back in the fall and harvested a lot of it. And um, you just use this in cooking as you would dried sage, um, common garden sage. So this is a collard stem that, that just made it through the winter and here it is re-sprouting. And these are just yummy edible shoots, broccoli rob. You can eat these little stems and um, just kind of keep shearing it like this. And you can cook these like you would collards, broccoli, or kale. And I just keep coming out here harvesting them like that and it'll just keep on producing throughout the spring. This is evergreen hardy scallion. It can survive the winter in the north, outside, or in our hoop house. And it just keeps on growing. It's, it's, it's about four years old now. What I like to do is just come and clip it like that. And then I have all these fresh green onions to eat. These are the flowering stalks, which is kind of cool. They're gonna make flowers. You can save your own seeds from them. And they also attract the beneficial insects. The only thing you gotta do is keep them weed free.